So the motivation for our study was really that a lot of people are interested in how climate change affects food production. And the focus so far has been that people looked at how does climate change affect the quantity of food produced. Uh, however, what is actually well known is that the number one um, contributor to death is um, are dietary risk factors that have to do with imbalanced diets, such as diets low, low in fruit and vegetables, diets high in red and processed meat. So we wanted to look at how climate change affects those dietary risk factors. And what we found was that uh, climate change can be expected to lead to about half a million additional deaths worldwide by 20, in 2050 due to changes in diets and body weight. This research is very much model uh, driven, so we coupled several global models together. At the beginning there were uh, several so-called general circulation models with project changes in temperature and pre precipitation around the world. The results of those models we took uh, as inputs into globally, globally created crop models which told us how um, crops will react to those changes in temperature and precipitation. And those changes in uh, crop output we put into a global agricultural economic model that told us how does markets and farmers really react to those changes. For example, some farmers might decide to uh, plant larger areas. Uh, in addition, prices will change in general, increase if production decreases, and trade will change the whole picture as well. And what we took from that uh, economic model was then really changes in food consumption uh, by commodities. And based on those changes, we calculated different health outpoints that had to do with those dietary and weight-related risk factors, such as fruit and vegetable consumption, red meat consumption, and total kilocalorie availability that we associate with changes in weight levels. We found that most climate-related deaths are expected to be due to reductions in fruit and vegetable consumption and actually double the amount that we find that would be due to increases in underweight. But of course, that is a highly differentiated picture. So we find that, for example, three quarters of all climate-related deaths would occur in Southeast Asia, where India is, and in the Western Pacific, where China is. But in both of those regions, the risk factors are very different. So, for example, in China, most people are expected to, um, to be burdened by the reductions in fruit and vegetable consumption, which leads to the greatest burden there. Whereas in India, the greatest burden would be due to increases in the amount of uh, underweight people. So the, re the reason we expect that reductions in fruit and vegetable consumption have such a big health impact is that even small changes in the consumption lead to changes in coronary heart disease, stroke, cancer, with which uh, fruit and vegetable consumption is correlated. So there are two key implications of this paper. The first has to do with emissions reductions. So we tested several different emissions pathways and we found that if we go from a high climate change scenario to sort of medium climate change scenarios, we can reduce the health burden of climate change by about a third. And if we go further to a very ambitious scenario in which we try to limit global warming to no more than two degrees by end of the century, then we could reduce the health impacts of climate change by 70%. The second point is that the risk factors that we find really highlight also climate change adaptation strategies. So it's really important that especially fruit and vegetable consumption will be safeguarded by, for example, public health programs. And at the same time, the differentiated risk factors that we found highlight that it's really important to look at the whole weight spectrum, uh, not only on underweight, but also on the people who are overweight, to not basically um, lead from one bad thing to another. So in total, what we suggest is really to move beyond this focus on the quantity of food to a focus on the quality of food and to look at um, that we get the right composition of foods.